Hi everyone, this is Jose Palomino with another episode of the Revenue Throughput Podcast. And today's guest is Wes Schaefer, otherwise known as the Sales Whisperer. And Wes really brings a fresh perspective to the entrepreneur owner in how they have to look at their job one. We'll find out more in just a second as we welcome Wes to our show. Well, welcome Wes to the Revenue Throughput Podcast. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Wes, we're, we're excited about, especially some of the things you said, and I'll reference them in a second, uh, how you described yourself, I found very interesting. But why don't you just give us a little context here, who you work with, and some of the things that you focus on. So, you know, like all successful living creatures it has evolved uh back in the day 2006 you know i started this and it was purely old school sales training um as i saw the way the world was evolving with technology with with uh internet marketing things of that nature i realized uh having systems in place was the only way to scale predictably and affordably um, I became pretty good and well known uh, at working on various platforms for sales and marketing automation. Mm -hmm. uh, and really, it was two sides of the same coin. Sales and marketing, um, you know, should should get along. Quite often, they are in silos and they are uh, beating up one another inside of corporations. Uh, so in the beginning, I was working with uh, solopreneurs, very small businesses that evolved into. Uh, still small businesses, but, you know, five to 25 employees. Um, and I still kind of stay in that lane. Uh, but I've had clients as big as Dell and, and, um, and, you know, big corporations, but it's typically the, you know, under, under 50 employees, or I should say really more like under 25 salespeople. Sometimes that could be a very large organization, you know, but, uh, but working with smaller sales teams. Well, it's interesting because I, I found that same group in, and similar to you in that um, the desire to bring together, you know, strategy, marketing and sales and in larger enterprises, those things are so siloed and competitive because they have to do with competing for resources, for direction, for prominence and honor, all those things. But when you get into the smaller, what you've described as like an owner led business, frankly, the whole leadership team is in the same room or near, very near each other. And right conceivably can find a way to, to, to bring those things together. Now, as you look out at that market, that let's call them small to mid-market type firms, uh, they're being offered so much in terms of uh, automation, training, all these options, right? So you're like an owner there and you're thinking, okay, life was a lot simpler just 10 years ago. And here we are now. What do you tell that owner in terms of how to make sense of it all? Like just make sense of all the noise, all the different options, because they want to do the right thing, but they can't do everything. And it just seems a little bit above their pay grade in terms of the technical understanding. So I'm just curious how you help them kind of map out that path. Because you talk about systems or being systematic. What advice would you have for them? Um, I've got a, a free planning tool on my website. I call it process before login. Mm. What happens is people search for technology like hungry people go grocery shopping. <clears throat> you end up with a bunch of crap you don't want or need, right? <laughs> you know, I, I, I'll have this like, I'll have an entrepreneur, they're launching their speaking coaching business. And they'll tell me, I, I want salesforce.com or something. You know, I'm like, why? Well, I saw that Tony Robbins uses it. You know, <laughs> I saw <laughs> Oprah uses it. Like, you're not Tony Robbins, you're not Oprah, you know? So I tell them, take a step back. So that process before login, right? Document your process. Mm. Um, Love that. When, when we meet with clients, you know, in person or, or remotely, um, we, especially in person, I mean, we'd literally use big sticky notes. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had butcher block paper, wrapping paper, you know, or uh, a packing paper, you know, those big heavy rolls are like, yeah, like sure, three sure, feet sure. tall and like, right. I don't know, 50, 60 pounds. Right. Uh, we'll have that and just rip it and lay it out on a table. We'll, we'll tape it to a wall and we we write it out. Say, tell me about your business. Where, where does the lead come from? 
Mm-hmm. Do they hit your website? Do they call in? Do they visit your place of business? Okay, then what happens? Right? And and most entrepreneurs, small business owners, they they're succeeding despite themselves. Right? It's just the hustle and the grind and because it's their baby. You know, I've, I've got seven kids, right? I've, I've been there for all seven births. Wow. Uh, I've seen my wife. Right. Yeah, thank you. I've seen my wife, you know, nurse seven children for at least a year. Uh, and I've seen it still to this day, right? We've got grown kids and she'll, I'm dead asleep. She's, she's up, she's awake midnight, one o'clock waiting for them to come home. I don't even hear them come in. <laughs> You know, and I tell people being an entrepreneur, having a business is the closest thing, at least a man would come to, to having a child, right? Like giving birth, you know, like this is their baby. They, 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 they thought of it, they created it, they're nurturing it. They're going to lose sleep over it. Okay. And so, so just through pure, you know, force of will, they'll make the business be okay. But I'm like, what? What do you do next? What happens after the phone rings? What happens after you get the request for a proposal, blah, blah, blah. And as I have them documented, it's hard. Right? It's it's hard. Uh, I, I hear you, Wes, because I, I've done similar exercise where I so said, tell me your sales process. And it's like, take order, ship product. That's okay. Yeah. That's not, that's right. not the sales process. That's, yeah. I, you know, I, uh, can we tease that out a little bit? You know? <laughs> exactly. I need to, I need to look up the quote, but I, I was a big golfer back in the day. And I think it was Sam Snead. Uh, it was one of those greats. Uh, yeah. But somebody asked him like, Hey, do you inhale or exhale on your backswing on a putt? And he was like, I don't know. So then he started analyzing himself and he got, he got in a funk, you know, a bit of a slump because he was, he, he, he wasn't in the zone. Right. Right. So he's trying to break it all down. So I want you to break it all down and it won't get you in a funk, but you've got to document things. And that's why it takes an outsider coming in because we can look at things with fresh eyes. Go, why do you do it that way? Have you thought about this? So once they document it, you know, and everybody's different. Some do e-commerce, some do big orders, some have very sh- short sales cycles, some have very long sales cycle, uh, some have very simple sales process, some are dealing, you know, the com- the complex sale, selling to committees, you know, lot- lots of buy off and sign off. So once that's documented, how does it integrate? Are you doing e-commerce? Do you need to text messaging? Do you need just outbound? Do you need two-way communication? All that matters. Okay, once we lay that out, now we there's our shopping list. Right. Well, let's go look at this platform. Oh, it doesn't do this. Okay. It's out. All right. Next one. Oh, it does this. Not that it's out. Okay. This one does everything we need. You know, well, nothing does everything you need, right? This one does 90% of what we need, but it's three times our budget. This one does 80% of what we need, but it's under budget. So we can find some other tools to plug in. So you've got to document that stuff uh, or you're just, you're going to keep, you know, kissing frogs. Uh, and it's very frustrating. It's time consuming. It's going to cause you to lose sleep and lose money. You know, if you're constantly tinkering and testing new platforms. But Wes, uh, I'm a, I'm the owner of a, let's say a 30 person company. I have three sales guys and, you know, I pick guys who really know the industry. They, they've had sales success elsewhere. And I really, I believe in kind of not getting in their way. Just, I just ask them what they need. I try to give them what they need. And I think they're doing a good job. So I don't know that I need to layer in all this other stuff. Yeah, that's always the problem. The owner becomes uh, held hostage by the salespeople. And the salespeople will always leave you. All of your employees are eventually going to leave. Okay. And they're going to leave at the worst possible time, especially a salesperson. Look, they are, they are coin operated. Okay. If they feel like they've topped out, they're going to go. And when you leave it up to the salespeople to dictate the pace, uh, then basically you're beholden to them. Okay. And because, you know, companies do this because they haven't done their processes. They haven't mapped them out. They just hustle and grind it out and they make enough money and they bring on a salesperson. They usually have a lot of turnover. Uh, They've kissed a lot of frogs. They finally have a few good salespeople. Now they're worried deep down. They're worried they're going to leave. Uh, they're worried that they don't know really what's going on. They end up managing and massaging the numbers because, you know, you got Joe. Joe's always an optimist. Joe says this deal is 99% done. Then, you know, it's probably 75% done. 
you know, Mary's a pessimist. Mary says it's 60% done. You know, it's probably 90% done, but you know, your people, you can massage the numbers and you can do your forecasting. It, it, it should not be so mythical, so ethereal to right. figure out what the hell your pipeline is. Okay. But because you don't have your processes, you haven't documented how many phone calls does it take to reach somebody? How many phone calls, direct mail pieces, emails, drop buys, you know, how much, what does it really take to reach your ideal prospects and how do you reach them? People, they just wing it. They're going to hire somebody with a Rolodex and with industry experience, set them down and get out of their way. Well, good luck with that. Okay. Yeah, so if somebody I'm... is that good, they're going to be in demand. They're going to be stolen by your competitor at the worst possible time. And if you get that person and you say, wow, I'm amazed it only cost me X. There's a reason why the, that they, as you said, yeah. they're not available at a discount unless there's a problem. Yeah. When, when you have better marketing and better systems, Look at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. They have like a 300% turnover and they still make money. Right. Because they have systems and processes. Right. If you're very thorough in that, you can hire lower dollar people and say, follow the system, right? Like Nick Saban, you know, with Alabama, the evil Crimson Tide, but the guy's a great coach. Okay. He has his systems and he plugs kids in that will work his system. Uh, but very few organizations are that thorough. That's why they're just mediocre and they struggle. Well, so now that's some tough love, right? If you have to tell somebody that. So I'm just curious how, when you evaluate a, a potential client, so you thought you're looking to talk to somebody, somebody says, I need some help. I think I might need some help here, Wes. So, so can you take a look, walk us through whatever you got to walk us through. And, uh, and you have to tell them, listen, your, your marketing sucks. Your salespeople aren't particularly good. Even your even your son-in-law who works for you isn't that good. You know, what, whatever that story is. And when you do that, uh, how hard, uh, how well received or how ready do you think an owner has to be to be able to take that kind of information, you know, take that medicine? Or do you ever find that they just say, listen, okay, thanks a lot. Got what you had to say, but I'm going to just keep on doing what I'm doing. Well, I'm in a unique spot. You know, I own my own business, so I'm in control of the messaging and the marketing and, and the processes. Uh, and so I am I sort, sift, and separate instead of sell, mm. right? Uh, but I've done this for a long time, even before I had my own business. You know, I, I can't tell you that you have back pain. You have to call me and tell me you have back pain. And now I have to diagnose, you know, is it just a little stiffness? You did a little extra yard work over the weekend or, you know, oh, it's a car wreck. Oh, it's an old injury from, you know, high school or college, whatever. And then, okay, well, do you just need some physical therapy and a massage? You know, do you need surgery? So all the, but I can't tell you that you have pain. So ideally, you know, you've got good marketing, you've got good processing, you've got good scripts. You can talk to people and touch some nerves, you know, hit some hot buttons, uh, even the opening lines to make them go, huh? What? Well, yeah, that, I mean, that kind of sounds like me. Well, what do you mean? It kind of sounds like you. Well, yeah. I, I mean, sales are a little bit unpredictable. What do you mean a little bit? Mm. You know, well, they're a lot unpredictable. Uh, you know, who besides you cares? Well, I mean, I'm the owner. Well, you have a partner. You have silent investors. You have a spouse. You know, yeah, my wife's, you know, nagging on me. And <clears throat> I've got, uh, you know, a partner and, you know, he owns 30%. Okay. Um, you know, if you don't make any changes, where do you see things going? 90 days, you know, six months, two years from now. Uh, we're not trending in a good direction. What do you want to do about it? You know, I haven't told them a thing about me. Right. I haven't told them talked about CRMs or e-commerce or social media marketing or SEO or SEM or ain't nothing. I'm trying to find out is their pain, you know? And, and once they're like, yeah, can you help me? Like, I don't know, but I need to dig in, you know, are you willing to come in? Let's get the MRIs, get the CAT scan. Right. You know, uh, and I'm at the point now, I mean, I, I charge a diagnose, uh, diagnostic fee. Just like, you know, you call the mechanic, hey, my car's going clunkety clunk. Is it going clunkety clunk or clankety clank? Well, I think it's clunkety clunk. It could be clankety clank. Is it when you accelerate, decelerate, or when you're cruising speed? Uh, I don't know. Well, you know what? It's $65. Come on in. You know, we'll hook it up to the computer. 
you know, we'll find out the problem. We'll apply the fee towards any work that's done, or you can go get a second, a second quote with that report. Oh, okay. Otherwise, I'm just guessing and hoping and trying to sell you on why I'm the best mechanic and bring your car in right away because right. your family's safety depends on it. Well, now it's just a pitch. Right. So if, if you can't sell somebody on a $500 diagnostic fee, how are you going to sell them a $5,000 or $55,000 project? Right. Right. Because they have to they have to have a sense of that you are a credible alternative to talk to at all. And if yeah. you are, then paying for your time to give them something that's of great value, which is an accurate diagnosis of what they need to do. And that's a roadmap. That roadmap either leads, you know, certainly in, in your case could lead to you implementing for them that roadmap. But there's value in the roadmap. Just saying, okay, let me let me see what I'm going to do here. And, and there's tremendous value in that. Absolutely. Um, because these things are very complex. And I think a lot of these owners in this category, uh, they may have personal sales chops because that's how they grew the business. But now they're running the business. And they haven't been able to duplicate themselves because right. the fact is they're trying to hire somebody to have the same zeal and passion for the business that they had. And yep. That's a hard person to find. It's you not going to happen. Find that. Right, if exactly. they have that same passion, they'll just start their own business. Exactly. So right. you it's like, you know, don't Sol want that. <laughs> it's like you know, Solomon and the baby, right? I mean, yeah. hey, let's just cut the baby in half. And the mom, the real mom says, no, 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 just take the baby. Right. You know, the... Uh, it's not my, big, and I, the analogy I use, you know, it, it, for an entrepreneur, having a business is the closest thing we're going to have as men to, to rearing a child. You know, it's like, we care about this thing. Nobody else is going to care about our business like we do. Right. And so, you know, I, I've worked, and I'm sure you have as well with, with women business owners that are feeling that twice as much then, because they can really, really relate to that whole sure. <laughs> birth that, that whole birth and nurturing cycle in a different way. That's fantastic. Um, so, you know, as you look at this and as we look at as, uh, as business owners, there's often the crowd of, of options, meaning I got to do so many things. I know I have to work on so many things. If you had to tell an owner, you know, listen, if you get one thing right this year, and you think it's a bit of a mess. You're still in business, so you haven't gone out of business. You're not like, you know, you're not about to go out of business, but you know it ain't right. What's one thing an owner should be doing for the rest of 2021? Well, I tell business owners always, I mean, their number one job is to market their business. And it doesn't mean you have to become an expert at PPC and SEO, blah, 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 but it's your message. Okay, you've got to hire people that are going to help you tell your message because people don't do business with you for one of two reasons. Either they haven't heard of you or they have. Okay, so okay. <laughs> as, assuming you have a good business, then the reason you're not getting more business because people haven't heard of you. Mm. Uh, and we get caught up in, you know, if we build it, they will come. If I build a better mousetrap. Okay, that is crap. Even though the very idea of the better mousetrap was a story, a better story written by a salesman. Mm. Okay, it was literally rewritten. Um, so the guy's name was Hubbard. Um, he, he rewrote it. And so the number one job of an entrepreneur of a business owner is to market their business and the number one sin of marketing is being boring mm. most people are very predictable i'm working with uh one of my best friend's sons just graduated college he's got an internship a big uh financial house he's got to make cold calls he's got to build his list you know and he, he sent me the script and it was just so predictable we're a 164 year old company. We have a proprietary software that will <laughs> analyze your retirement planning and give you options. I'm like, nobody cares, dude. You know, it's like, it's literally like going to the bar and going, what's well, a nice girl like you do it in a place <laughs> like this. Like, okay. Click goodbye. Check help uh, bouncer. Please throw this guy out. Right. I mean, you're just, it's so predictable. You can't be predictable. Right. You know? And so, but you're not an expert in marketing. 
So you, you think I'm just going to double down. I'm going to make a better mousetrap. People will find me. We just need to run some simple ads. I'm like, no, it's, it's more complicated today. You know, you've got to, and it doesn't mean you got to be wacky or crazy. It just means you, you just, you got to know how to get your buyer's attention. And in the old adage, you know, Robert Collier, I mean, 50, 60 years ago or more, you know, we must enter the conversation going on in the mind of the prospect. I love that. Remember the, the Mel Gibson movie, What Women Want? Uh, yeah. Right? right. Falls in the water and gets electrocuted. Right. And he can hear, right? He's the, so he started, you know, he's this male chauvinist pig, right? And then, but now he's like, whoa, he, all of a sudden he had empathy, right? He, could, he literally could enter the conversation going on in the mind of his prospects. And he could give them what they wanted. So how good are you at, at entering that conversation? If you do that, everything else gets quite easy. No, that's, that's uh, Wes, I, I tell you, that's, uh, that's worth the price of admission. Just that one big <laughs> thought, right? Like how, and then how do you do that? Because that, that, that leads to a lot of how questions, which are better right. to get answers to, but at least it tells you what you should be focused on. And I, and I love right. that you really emphasize the number one thing, which I know a lot of business owners did in the early days but sometimes they just get tired, which is oh, yeah. you, you can't stop marketing your business. You can't stop putting your business out there. That's your number one job. No, it's not, yes, you have to make sure operations run well. You have to make sure people get paid on time. You got to make sure your production does what it, production is supposed to do. You should have people doing that for you. But your passion, your zeal from what you're telling me here has got to be as an owner, make sure that I am marketing my business. That's job yeah. one. It's your baby, right? Now you can find people to run a lathe, to do your bookkeeping, mm -hmm. to supervise operations. Okay. You can find those people much easier than somebody that can truly market your business and, and convey, find the heart of your, of your being and, and, and convey it to the world. Right. So, but we, it's hard. So we major in the minors. Well, I gotta, I gotta finish up some bookkeeping. I gotta enter some receipts. Like, well, I gotta type in some business cards from people that I met. Like, what are you, what are you hiding from? Right. What are You're you hiding, hiding from something. From? Right. That's good, Wes. Well, listen, we are, we are out of our time here. This has just been a great conversation. I really love uh, the, the insights here. And, just landing the plane on that number one thing is such a powerful thing. So Wes, thank you so much. And a question for you is if somebody listening to this podcast says, well, gee, it sounds like Wes is onto something and they wanted to learn more about you and what you do. And we'll include this in our show notes, but some people just hear and don't read uh, what we yeah. have. Where should they go? What's the best place to go to learn more about you and what you do? Well, I mentioned that free tool. Just go to the saleswhisperer.com and then forward slash P B L so it's process before login. Uh, there's a video there, a PDF you can download and, um, you know, start there. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much again, Wes, really appreciate it. And, uh, thanks for being part of the revenue throughput podcast. Hey, thanks for having me.